In this video, I will be taking you to 10th century Rome. The Catholic Church was being overseen by Pope John XII. He was one of the youngest popes ever, and perhaps due to his youth, he would become infamous for his depravity. He was described as a robber, a murderer, an incestuous person, and unworthy to represent Christ. This abominable priest soiled the chair of St. Peter for nine entire years and deserved to be called the wickedest of popes. This is his story. John's ascension to the papal throne came at the end of what Catholic historians call the Seculum Obscurum, meaning the Dark Century, and others called the time period the Papal Pornocracy, meaning the rule of prostitutes. During these dark times, Rome and the papacy had been controlled by powerful rival Italian families. But first, let's have a look at John's early life. Before ascending to the papal throne, John's name was Octavianus. He was the son of Alberic II of Spoleto. Alberic was a patrician, which is someone from a ruling class family of ancient Rome. Octavianus's father was the self-styled Prince of Rome, whilst his mother was the daughter of the King of Italy. So growing up, Octavianus would have everything he ever wanted, a fine education, the best food, and the best possible life. Before the death of Octavianus's father in 954, he administered an oath to the Roman nobles and St. Peter's, providing that his son Octavianus would ascend to the papal throne. It wasn't the worth of a man's soul that would lead him to become the Pope, but the deals and bribery of man. From early on, the papacy had been corrupted, tainted, and was not fit for purpose. By the time of Alberic's death, Octavianus had entered the church, and with his father's death, he would succeed his father as the Prince of the Romans. He would ascend to this title young, being in between the ages of 17 and 24. Not only would he be the Prince of Rome after the death of his father, he also became the Cardinal Deacon, a senior member of the clergy of the Catholic Church, immediately under the Pope in the Church's hierarchical structure. Soon enough, in the year 955, Pope Agapetus II would die, and Octavianus was elected as his successor on the 16th of December, 955. He would take on the name of John XII, and would ascend to the papal throne. A young man in his teens or early twenties, who had only known luxury and status, now stood at the pinnacle of the Catholic Church. John was now the youngest pope in history. What became evident very quickly was that the last thing on his mind was the well-being of the church, its affairs, and his relationship with God. This pope would instead be known for his gambling, drinking, and sexual antics. John allowed, and practically encouraged, Rome to slide into decay, whilst he used its wealth to fund his wild gambling and lavish lifestyle. The Lateran Palace was turned into an enormous brothel, where John would openly have sex with married women. He had numerous mistresses. He made one of them the governor of one of the papal cities, and loaded her with church treasuries. Another one, he inherited from his father, and he impregnated her. There were even reports that he would lure female pilgrims into his palace, not for prayer, but for sex. Although John loved nothing more than debauchery, he also had a serious side, and was no coward. In the year 960, John personally led an attack against the Lombards, a Germanic people who ruled much of the Italian peninsula. This was to reclaim part of the papal states that were lost in prior wars and conflicts, however, Gisulf, the Prince of the Lombards and John, instead of fighting, entered negotiations and they came to an agreement. However, John would soon find his lands in turmoil once again, as King Berengar II of Italy began to attack the territory of the Pope. John had been squandering the wealth of the church on his depraved lifestyle, parties, women of the night, gambling, and great feasts. That's what John spent the church's money on. He knew that he no longer had the funds to mobilise the papal army, so he would need aid. John would send papal legates in 960 to King Otto I of Germany, 
inviting him personally to Rome. However, Otto of Saxony was the complete opposite to John, and he knew of battle, but not only that, he was widely known for his piety and chivalry. On the 2nd of February, the year 962, Otto and his wife knelt before the young Pope in St. Peter's Basilica and received the imperial crown of the Holy Roman Empire. In exchange, Otto vowed to protect John and the Papal States. Otto remained in Rome for two weeks, and his relationship with John quickly deteriorated. Now the Holy Roman Emperor, Otto began lecturing John on his immoral and shameful lifestyle. He said to John, Why do you pass your whole life in vanity and adultery? But the Pope chose not to remember any of Otto's words. A report was sent to Otto while he was fighting against King Berenger II of Italy. It spoke of his continued mistresses, gambling, and whoring with female pilgrims. It stated, The palace of the Lateran, which had once sheltered saints, was now a harlot's brothel. Otto was still relatively laid back about the situation, and would reportedly say, He is only a boy, and will soon alter if good men set him an example. His attitude would soon change, however, when he heard of John's new friendship with Aldebert, the son of King Berenger, the very man who Otto was fighting against for John. Pope John had become very anxious due to the respect Otto earned from others, his triumphs in battle, his expanding territory. He became increasingly jealous and fearful of the man he made the Holy Roman Emperor. Just as was his nature, he would engage in treachery. He entered negotiations with the Byzantine Emperor in Constantinople, Aldebert, and even King Berenger about joining forces against Otto. Upon hearing of this betrayal, Otto set off once again for Rome, but this time at the head of an army. Otto would besiege Rome in the summer of the year 963. There, he found a city divided. His supporters had fortified themselves in the Papal Basilica of St. Paul, whilst Pope John and his supporters retained the Leonine city, a part of Rome enclosed by a wall. At first, John would try to rally his troops. He appeared in full armour, and managed to lead the Papal army to drive Otto's forces back across the Tiber River. He soon realised the devastation taking place, and the amount of deaths on his side. He would abandon the city of Rome, and he took the Papal treasury with him, fleeing to Tibur. Otto, a man of mercy, instead of simply raising the town of Tibur to the ground, he summoned a council and demanded that John present himself and defend himself for his treachery and other numerous charges. Those were adultery, incest, murder, perjury, and sacrilege. Pope John wrote back saying, We hear you wish to make another Pope. If you do, I excommunicate you by Almighty God, and you have no power to ordain no one, or celebrate Mass. Otto and his council paid no heed to the words of Pope John, and a new Pope would be elected, Pope Leo VIII. This wouldn't prove to be easy though. Rome's citizens rebelled against Leo's election, and were bloodily suppressed by Otto's occupying forces. Otto knew that his time in Rome would be limited. He still had King Berenger to contend to, and his feudal lords were requesting his presence back in Germany. So in January 964, Otto left Rome. As soon as Pope John heard of Otto's departure, he returned to Rome with an army, causing the new Pope Leo to flee. He summoned a synod, which nullified his deposition. John was angry, and he would inflict a savage and bloody revenge on those he thought had betrayed him. Some bishops had their tongues cut out, others had their hands or fingers removed, and some even had their noses sawn off. John was once again the master of Rome, but it was a restoration he would only enjoy for a few months. Pope John XII died on the 14th of May, 964. He met his end in the arms of a married woman. Her husband walked in on Pope John and his wife. He immediately was blinded by rage and beat Pope John to death. A fitting end for a man who loved nothing more than depravity. 
Pope John XII was no doubt a terrible man. He was a slave to his passions and urges, and the church and following God's rules were the last things on his mind. He was guilty of the seven deadly sins, lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, and pride. Not only that, he was also guilty of treachery and was a jealous man, hating Emperor Otto for being everything he was not. Just because you have a position of power that is perceived to be connected with God does not make you a moral man. As we can see, Pope John had a weak will, and even his position as Pope could not make him change his ways. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Let me know your thoughts on Pope John in the comment sections down below, and I'll see you all soon for another History Profile.